Good morning and happy Monday. Welcome to, to week two. I hope you are each doing well and that you thoroughly enjoyed your weekend. Hopefully you got a chance to do some things that you were not able to do during the week. So the title of, of our lecture today is, is What Drives You and Why? So the first two chapters of the two texts that you're reading from for this class really focus on thinking about what your motivations are for wanting to engage in advocacy and then also thinking about what it really takes to move from being a bit more passive or, or reluctant to demonstrating more passion, more zeal for advocating for, for policy and being a proponent for engaging in policy. And so I wanted to start today with really acknowledging the work of some really important individuals, in my opinion, who have played critical roles in shaping the landscape of, of our nation and our history. So probably the most uh, notable person in, in this collage of photos is Congressman John Lewis, who really dedicated his life to fighting for others and really advocating for social change um, and, and for racial justice and civil rights. This is an image of him as a very young man right here in our state, getting into some good trouble, as he would say, um, in our capital, a, a mugshot, doing what he felt was, was right. We're really advocating for social change. Right below him um, is a group of young students who look to be probably in their late teens, early 20s, who were a part of the Freedom Rides in the 1960s, who traveled across the southern region of our nation, working to register Black people to vote, uh, working to educate people about, about their rights, doing something that was incredibly courageous in a time of, of great violence um, and great terror against people who were engaging in this type of, of work. In the top right corner is Fred Hansen, who is really known today um, as, as an American activist um, and a revolutionary um, in his own right, who again, in his late teens, early 20s, um, became a leader in the Black Panther Party, advocating for social and civil rights um, and policies and policy changes on behalf of those who felt like they did not have a voice in our country. And then below Fred Hampton are student activists who were affected by uh, the school shooting in Parkland, Florida, who really used their voices, who were on major platforms across the nation calling for gun control and gun reform in our nation. So it's, it's important to acknowledge people like this because in my opinion, it really helps to give, give a perspective because what each of these people really exemplify are individuals who recognized a critical need that not only affected, affected them directly, but affected larger groups of, of people. They recognized a the need, they had a passion to, to fight for change um, and really took up the, the mantle in advocating um, on behalf of, of other people. And so this country is really, um, young people, I should say, in this country are really no stranger in, in terms of, of being change agents. It's been young people who have truly been at, at the forefront. So if nothing else is, is apparent about these images, it, it for me, um, you should recognize their passion and their, and their zeal. And so when you're thinking about um, the, the issues that you're personally attached to, I hope that these images resonate with you in some way. So when we think about helping professionals, be it um, professionals who are in the behavioral health or mental field, like several of you who are in education, it can be others in social work or different capacities in the social services. The common thread is that we advocate to make a difference. 
when we recognize a student, a, a client, a patient, a consumer, what have you, um, who has a need that is not adequately being met, we make some noise. We make some noise. Um, we advocate to really see change um, in that person's life. And not just that particular person, but ultimately, we should be thinking about how changes can really affect larger groups of people and impact the lives of, of the masses. Our motivations, however, are often shaped by different factors. So when we think about what our own individual um, interests might be, different things really influence what we're drawn to and what we're passionate about. It can be our values, things that were instilled in us as young children, or different values that we have gravitated towards as we have matured and, and developed into you know, um, adults. It can also be our lived experiences. Maybe we have personal experiences of, of facing oppression or facing injustice that helps us to identify with certain groups of people. It can be our relationship to the issue or lack thereof. It's something that um, directly affects me or affects those that I care deeply about. Um, and it really can be our ability to look beyond ourselves. So moving away from this very individualistic, self-centered perspective and embracing a more collectivist perspective that recognizes that we're all interconnected in some way. It may not be um, explicit, it may not be clearly, clearly or easily noticeable, but being a part of, of humanity uh, essentially means that as human beings, we're, we're all connected. So when there is a need that affects a certain uh, group, as a helping professional, if, if nothing more, that, that should pull on our heartstrings, that should motivate us to really want to advocate for substantive change. So there's this sort of central question that also sparks a great deal of debate, especially in, in terms of, of political spaces. Are, fam are families a public issue or a private matter? Essentially, should folks be responsible for themselves? Should folks be responsible for getting up, going to work every day and making sure that their children, that their families and loved ones have what they need? Or should that responsibility uh, rest with other entities, namely the government. Okay, so you know each of you might have a clear idea about where where you fall on that. You may say absolutely, you know, families are are a public issue, um, or you might say absolutely not. You know, families are are a private matter, and every person and every family is responsible for themselves. Um, or you may feel like it's not that black not that black and white of an issue. Maybe for you, it's more of a continuum. Wherever you fall, it's, in, it's important that you do be intentional about figuring out where your values truly lie. I think this, this excerpt from Bogan Schneider is really important. Excessive obsession with the self is a major threat to our public life and a major crisis in our personal lives. If we as a nation continue on this trajectory um, and responding to the needs of people as if there should be no, no common interest, as if we are not truly a collective unit, um, there is going to be a huge, a huge detriment. And it's not just going to be to those particular groups of people who are facing the need, but ultimately it's going to impact all of us because we're all truly interconnected. So what I would encourage you to do um, is take a moment, you can pause this video um, and really reflect on these questions that I've outlined. Um, and again, like I started out, Engaging in these sort of reflective questions should be a practice for us. So even if there is an issue that you know you're passionate about, maybe you've done policy work or maybe you've done advocacy work before, um, that's great. I, I commend you. But we have to keep 
the needs of, of the people at, at the forefront. And so continually, continuously going back and asking yourself, why do I have this interest? Why am I so um, dedicated to advocating for this particular group as it relates to this particular issue? So what I want you to do, and this is just, just for you to be reflective and be honest with yourself. Think about what motivates you to advocate for others. Secondly, what privileges do you possess that can be used as leverage to advocate for others? And then thirdly, are there wrong reasons for doing advocacy? Are there reasons for doing advocacy that might compromise effectiveness and then explain your, your responses to that last question? So I will post these questions to the discussion board um, and I want you to review the responses of others, to engage in, in some conversation, really probing, asking um, some critical questions so that we can, can dig a little bit, a little bit deeper. And I look forward to seeing those responses. I also want to put this on your radar. Um, over the course of, of the semester, we have been given the, the green light to have some optional live lectures that will be available via Zoom. So I'm going to do that starting next Monday at 10 a.m. Um, again, emphasis on optional. I'm not asking anybody to leave work uh, or to leave any other obligation you might have. If you're available and if you're interested, I'll be holding live lectures August 31st, October 5th, and November 2nd, Mondays at 10 a.m. Um, I'll also record those, so if you do have interest, I will post those recordings to, to Canvas for your viewing and your convenience. Um, as always, please feel free to contact me with any questions, concerns, comments that you might have. Thank you for those lovely introductions that you all posted on last week and for sharing some interesting facts about your life and, and your family, um, your families and your loved ones. I really enjoy reading those. And I look forward to reading your responses for this week. Other than that, I will see you all in the forums. Take care. Bye-bye.